Windows 10 is going end of life this October, and if you're like me, you might have some concerns about moving to Windows 11 for various reasons. Maybe it's a privacy concern with having to use a Microsoft account to log in, or concerns about the aesthetic, the change of the look of Windows 11 over Windows 10. So I wanna show you how to install Windows 11 without using a Microsoft account to log in, and switching up the aesthetic and making it look, on the surface at least, like Windows 10 again. And so just real quick, I wanna show you the exact date Windows 10 support ends on October 14th, 2025. So that's just around the corner, only a couple months away. And one more thing I wanna to touch on is the system requirements for Windows 11. I just wanna make sure you guys are compatible before you actually try to do this. So system requirements here, we've got a one gigahertz processor, a 64-bit processor, of course. You need to have at least four gigabytes of RAM. You probably want to have more than that, honestly, but four gigabytes is the minimum they're saying here. Uh, 64 gigs or larger of storage, right? So uh, your hard drive, 64 gigabyte hard drive or larger. You need to be able to have uh, UEFI. So this is a setting that you enable in your BIOS. It's like the menu for your computer's hardware that you can go into before you actually go into your operating system for Windows, for example. So yeah, UEFI, it just means secure boot capable. And so that will be a setting in your BIOS. It'll be secure boot and you would enable that. And I'll, I'll go through this later. And another one here, TPM. So this is an actual chip on your motherboard. And so there's a setting for it in your BIOS to enable the TPM chip. And so you have to have TPM version 2.0 here. And again, I will go over how to do this a little bit later. And so for graphics card, you just have to be compatible with DirectX 12 or later. And then for a display, just high definition 720p display, there you go. And I'm kind of assuming with this install that all of you are not using Copilot Plus PCs, that this is for like older hardware or not really Copilot Plus PCs. So we're gonna skip over this. Uh, you can read through that if you really want to, if it's relevant to you. And then the internet connection is required for Windows 11, but I'm gonna show you how to do the install without an internet connection. So this is an offline install, basically. Okay, so first things first, we open our browser and we search for Windows 11 download. And it's this first link here. We just click on download Windows 11. And it brings us to the Microsoft download tool page for Windows 11. So you don't want this, well, you could use this first one, but uh, we're gonna make one manually ourselves. So create Windows 11 installation media. We download this. Okay, and so that has been downloaded. It's in our downloads folder. So now you're gonna need to grab your trusty USB, right? We're gonna need to plug in our USB because the creation tool is going to create a Windows 11 ISO, basically just a virtual CD of a Windows 11 install, and we're gonna put it onto our flash drive. So go ahead and plug in your flash drive now. And I just wanna mention that the flash drive you're using, it's going to be completely erased by this process. So make sure you're using a flash drive you don't mind losing everything on. So go ahead and right click, run as administrator. All right, and you click accept. And we don't need to change any of the settings here, so just leave that and click next. And we're making our media on a USB flash drive. So you could just create the ISO file, the digital disk file, uh, but we're doing it directly onto a flash drive. So th that's kind of nice. This process includes that for us. So click next. And I only have one flash drive plugged in. So just make sure you click the right flash drive if you have multiple and uh, click next. And it's gonna download the whole Windows 11 kind of file here. So it's gonna download and then install it onto your flash drive. So just wait for that. Okay, so our flash drive is ready. So just click finish. Okay, so here's where things get a bit interesting. I'm gonna do this process on a virtual machine. So it's literally a virtual computer. It takes part of my physical computer's resources, you know, CPU, RAM, disk storage space. It sections off a little bit of it and creates a virtual computer inside my actual physical computer. So I'm gonna be doing my process on a virtual machine, but it will be essentially the same for you. But first things first, we're gonna enable those settings in the BIOS, so enabling secure boot and enabling the TPM module, but you have to do that in a specific way, and usually it's spamming the delete key right as you turn on your computer. So turn off your computer completely, after watching this segment, of course, turn off your computer completely and turn it on. And right as it's turning on, just 
tap that delete key over and over and that should bring you into your BIOS menu. It'll also show you on the screen really quickly on the bottom usually. It'll say what key you need to hit to get into your BIOS menu. And it's usually delete, like pretty much universally. Sometimes it can be F12, but uh, just try spamming that delete key to get into your BIOS menu. So we're recording from the phone for this section, so just bear with me. So this is my BIOS. This is gonna look very different from yours depending on the make and model of your motherboard. But uh, essentially you're gonna see a settings menu like this. You wanna find advanced settings. For me, it's at the top, so I click advanced go into my motherboard settings here. And so basically you're looking for security and anything about trusted. See, for me, I have a sub menu here for trusted computing. So I go into this and I wanna enable the TPM device here. So just for me, I had to make sure that TPM 2.0 was selected and security device support. I made sure this was set to enable. And so that made sure that my TPM module was enabled. Okay, so now for secure boot, we go into settings, we go into security, secure boot. And so we just have to make sure that secure boot is enabled. And so you're, you may have to do a little bit of looking around here and try and find the specific setting in your motherboard, your BIOS settings. But those are the two things that you're looking for. Something about trusted computing, or if you have it just straight up saying TPM module, enable the TPM module, and then look around and find secure boot, enable that. Okay, so now that we've set up those BIOS settings correctly, you want to look up the boot menu key for your motherboard. So if you have an Asus motherboard, you wanna look up Asus boot menu key. And it's gonna be something like F10, F11, F12, but whatever the case, look up your boot menu key, restart your computer and just be pressing that key over and over to get into your boot menu. And so you just wanna make sure you select the flash drive that you're using. So if it's a Samsung flash drive or PNY, just look for that right flash drive in the list and hit enter on that. And then you'll boot into the Windows 11 installer. So again, I'm on a virtual machine, so that's why mine looks a little different, but this is basically what you should be seeing, the Windows kind of startup circle spinning on the bottom so that we're getting into the Windows 11 installer. So you should be seeing the language settings screen here. So I'm using English, I'm in the United States, so I'm gonna leave it on English and click next. I want to use US keyboard settings, so I'm gonna leave it on that and click next. And so just leave the default here, leave it on install Windows 11, and then you just click this little checkbox. I agree for everything to set up Windows 11 and click next. And if you have a product key, you can put that in now, but I don't, so I'll hit I don't have a product key. And then we just wanna leave it on the default here, unless for whatever reason you wanna use Windows 11 Pro, if you have that product key, you can. Otherwise, I'm gonna go Windows 11 Home and we click Next. And so unfortunately, if you wanna use any version of Windows, you have to agree to their license terms. So you have to hit Accept here. All right, so now we're gonna set up the partitions for Windows 11. So it's really easy, you just click Create Partition and hit Apply, just don't change anything, and it will set that up for you. All right, and you just wanna make sure that the larger option here, the larger partition is selected. So megabytes, that's smaller than gigabytes, right? So we wanna select the 49.9 gigabytes drive. Mine's gonna be really small, because I'm again, I'm doing a virtual machine, so I only used like 50 gigs for mine. But yours should be like, I don't know, 500 gigs or one terabyte, whatever size your drive is, it should be pretty large. So pick that larger option and then click next. All right, it says we're ready to install, so just click install, and now we wait. Okay, so you should be looking at this screen. Is this the right country or region? I say yes. And then we want the US keyboard, so I say yes. We don't need a second keyboard, so I say skip. All right, so we're at the critical point here. It says our ethernet is not connected. We wanna install offline. We don't wanna install on the network and we don't want to install using a Microsoft account. So on your keyboard, hit Shift F10. This brings up a Windows command prompt. Okay, and you wanna type this exactly. So start space ms hyphen cxh colon local only, and then hit enter. Okay, and it brings up the menu to create a local account. So this is what we want. So go ahead and name the user that you wanna call your user and your password, and it'll bring up some security questions too. Go ahead and fill all that out and click next. All right, and now we're loading into Windows. Okay, and so on this screen, it's just asking about privacy settings. Just turn everything off to be the most private possible. You don't need any of it. And then click accept. And now we are in Windows. Okay, so we finished our install. 
So now to kind of customize it and make it a little bit more like Windows 10, at least on the surface here on your desktop. So go ahead and open up the default browser here, Microsoft Edge. And we're just gonna go to google.com and then we're gonna search for Windows 10 desktop background. Go to images and then this internet archive image here that comes up first, we're just gonna right click, save image as. Okay, so we open our file explorer here, go into our downloads, right click on that image and set as desktop background. So now our background looks like Windows 10 again. So now all we have to do is right click on our taskbar, go into taskbar settings, scroll down a little bit, taskbar behaviors here, click on that. And right there, taskbar alignment, just change that to left. And now we have it as close as we can pretty much get the look of the desktop to be like Windows 10. Well, I hope that helped, guys. I hope you enjoyed that Windows 11 install. Basically an offline install, we got to avoid using the Microsoft account and we customized the desktop a little bit to look more familiar to the Windows 10 look. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.